Last week, I was at this party, and there were all these amazing people there from all these different backgrounds. And I thought, this is going to be a great opportunity to network with some really interesting people. And everybody was happily engaging in all the usual small talk while I braced myself for the inevitable. So, what do you do for a living? To which I reply, I'm a scientist. And then they said, oh. <laughs> so awkward. Do you ever have one of those moments when you wish you could say what you were thinking? Like, whoa, you just missed a great opportunity. I love what I do. It's great and fun and amazing. And you just missed an amazing story. But I get it. And I also get that nobody gave me a clicker. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that when I say the word science, all of those blank stares are picturing something a little like this. <laughs> this is actually a really big deal for us. You should be clapping by now. <laughs> but it's all full of jargon, and it's completely incomprehensible. I get it. This is boring. I find it boring, too. But let me tell you a secret. This is not what science looks like. This dry read of an article is merely a tool, like a hammer to a builder. Science is a living process where we use these tools to create and to discover. So why am I telling you this? Because science needs you. We need you. We need you to be curious and excited about what we do, because each and every one of you is the most important part of the scientific process. And without your participation, our work has no meaning or no purpose. Not sure where to start engaging with science? Challenge your scientists to tell a better story. We are not the greatest at it, and we could really use the practice. There is no question too small. But if you're not willing to connect with science, then so many amazing stories are going to stay locked within these lines. So today we start. Today, I would love to share with you just one of those stories that lies within these lines. Today, we talk about multiple sclerosis, or MS. So MS is a disease where our immune system somehow gets the wrong message. And instead of protecting us, our immune system causes damage in our body where it just doesn't belong. But before we can understand what goes wrong, we need to have an idea of what a normal immune system looks like. So our immune systems have these specialized cells. They're kind of like security officers. And one of their jobs is to cruise the back streets and dark alleys of our body and just make sure everything is A-OK. -okay. So what happens if an unknown threat comes along? We're going to take something absolutely ridiculous, a fork. We've all seen them, we know what they look like, and we know that forks don't belong inside our bodies. <laughs> so what would happen, hypothetically, don't do it, um, if you swallowed a fork one day? What would your immune system do? So your security officers out walking the beat would come across a fork of all things. And what the? A fork? What they'd do is they'd raise an alarm and call a whole bunch of helpers to the scene of the crime. They then hand out pictures of what forks look like and send everybody else out to the rest of the body to find any forks that might have escaped. <laughs> this is a pretty efficient system. Our body uses this every single day to protect us from things like bacteria and viruses. But what goes wrong in MS? So in MS, somewhere, somehow, these security cells and helper cells get the wrong message. They somehow wake up one day and decide that the brain is an evil threat. They hand out instructions on how to go find a brain and then send everybody else up to find brains lurking in our bodies. Now, 
you'll be happy to know, our brains are pretty well protected from events like this. Our brain is enclosed by a barrier, and that makes sure that only essential goods and services get through. But somewhere in MS, these messages with the wrong message, they sneak through that barrier and they sneak into the brain. And once they're in the brain, they activate other immune cells to wake up and attack the brain. If you could imagine, because our brain controls so much of what we do, and that MS is damage in the brain, this is a pretty difficult disease to endure. Everything is affected. Memory, eyesight, emotion, walking, grasping, holding, ability to work, ability to care for your family, ability to care for yourself. Did you know that MS is the number one neurodegenerative disorder in young people? Did you know that right here, we have one of the highest rates of MS in all the world? Did you know that there are four different types of MS? And of all the drugs that exist out there to treat MS, they only treat one of the four types. So what are we doing about it? What about everybody else? That's what our research team is working on. We're trying to find new ways to treat MS, especially for those that have no other treatments available to them. And do you want to know the best part? We think we've done it. <clears throat> and of all the things that we could be using, we're using antipsychotic drugs. Drugs that have historically been used to treat psychiatric disorders, like schizophrenia or bipolar disorder or major depression. We think these drugs have one more trick up their sleeves. These drugs can sneak beyond that barrier into the brain and turn off those active cells and stop them from causing the damage that is MS. How can you not be excited by this? It gets better, though. These drugs, they come in pill form, so they're easy to take. These drugs, we can use them at a low dose, so we avoid the side effects. These drugs have been used in humans for decades and decades, which means we have dramatically cut down the time it'll take to get these in the clinics. Instead of spending the next 30 plus years seeking approval, we hope that you see these in the next five to 10. What an amazing science story, but it's not done because science doesn't stand still. This is where you come in and not because we need participants in our study or funders for our trial, because we need your curiosity and we need your questions. Because if we're not discussing science, we're not discovering. This whole MS project came to be because two people who never had a reason to meet started a conversation and they were curious enough to question each other, and that connection they formed allowed this great discovery. Take the internet, for example. Imagine a world without the internet. Imagine if the inventor never shared that knowledge. Imagine if nobody had the curiosity to tinker with it, to make it better or faster or stronger. If we're not discuss discussing, we're not discovering. So what can I do today to help make science more accessible to you? A while back, I asked my parents to send me a photo of myself doing something science-y as a kid. I thought I'd get a baby photo and I'd make up some story about probing microbial something or others. But these are the photos that I got instead. And it turns out, that I've been doing the science thing for quite some time now. And um, I wondered if this question of accessibility was possibly just lost in translation somewhere. So I did something radical, and I looked up the definition to science. And when I found the definition of science, I had to laugh, 
because it's like it's written by an academic for an academic. I mean, how could this kid do something that was so difficult to describe? Wasn't she just curious? Didn't she just have a desire to know or learn something? What if we could redefine the word science? What if we took that simple curiosity and then gave it the tools to make sure we were speaking the same language? What we're left with is actually quite simple. I want to disrupt this idea that science is by scientists for scientists because everyone has the power to be curious. I need you, my community, to be excited by science so our kids are excited by science. They're our next generation of discoveries. I need you to ask why and seek quality information and then discuss it with your neighbors because a connected community armed with knowledge can tackle anything, like why we shouldn't smoke, why our seas are being polluted, or why our kids need less sugar. I need you to challenge me to tell a better story. So the next time we meet at a party, make me explain my science in a way that makes sense to you, because you are the most important part of that process. And to that extent, I invite you all, whether here in this arena, by email or online, let's connect our curiosities and see what we can discover. Thank you.